Before the referendum, it was quite clear the government sent out a 16-page booklet saying exactly what we were coming out of. The choice was leave or remain, but somehow after the referendum it morphed into a deal. How did that happen and why is Boris Johnson's deal no better than anybody else's? Well, what, what actually happened was, a week after the referendum, a new term emerged, hard Brexit and soft Brexit. They, 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 they changed the language, hard Brexit bad, soft Brexit good. Uh, was kind of the way that they were trying to put this. Look, the vote was very clear. If you leave something, you leave it. You leave the institutions of the European Union. And what we've seen is three and a half years of blatant dishonesty by our political class. That then led to a so-called deal, which actually was a new EU treaty. Mrs May negotiated it. Everybody was horrified by it. Uh, and then because of what I'm going to call Brexhaustion, you know, yes. three and a half, oh, no, is it still going on? Yes. And Boris comes back from Brussels and cries victory, but actually, actually, it's very similar, very similar to what Mrs May had signed up to. It's not good. Now, because of the Brexit party, at least we're having a proper debate, because I felt back in February, second referendum was coming down the tracks, Brexit seemed dead. We won those European elections, we've got this thing back going, and in the last couple of weeks, Boris has gone further. He started to talk about negotiating a trade deal. Now, who's against the trade deal with Europe? No problem. Yeah. Trade deal, fine. It's the politics of it that we don't want. So we have shifted Boris out of fear, I think, more than anything else. So now, my job, our job, is to fight Labour in these seats that voted leave, that are represented by Remain MPs, where people are being told their vote's not valid, they're going to have to vote again. And we've got to get the Brexit Party voice in the House of Commons to hold Boris Johnson to account. That's what we've got to do. You, Brexit Party have come out with not a manifesto as such, because nobody believes manifestos these days, but a contract yes. with the British people. Is it just a clever bit of wordsmithing, or do you think you really can deliver on the promises that you've made? Well, I tell you what, I, mean, I, I honestly think that if you say to somebody in the street, manifesto, what's the first word that comes into your head? Lie. Exactly. <laughs> it's yeah, the first yeah, it one is. that comes into mind. Um, so that's why I came, I came up with the idea, idea of a contract. Look, we're not going to form a government at this stage of the game. We know that. But everything in that contract are things that we're going to campaign on, not just for the next three weeks, but in the years to come. Because I just think, you know, our level of trust and confidence in politics, politicians and parliament, it's bust, it's gone, it's broken. Yeah. And that's why we're proposing getting rid of the House of Lords, getting rid of the corruption that exists, we're giving out peerages and all the rest of it. We want a different voting system that is more representative, stop fraud in postal voting. Yeah, we are the new radicals. We are the ones that want to change politics for good, and British politics needs to come into the 21st century. It needs a fresh start. I think in other areas, too, you know, we, we are taking the modern approach. The BBC licence fee is completely out of date. Kids don't even watch television anymore. And many of us choose, you know, we streaming services, Netflix or whatever it is. Uh, so we want to, you know, we want to phase out the BBC licence fee. Uh, we want to help consumers. 20% of the food we buy comes into this country from outside of Europe. All of it has taxes put on it. You know, we can reduce people's shopping bills. I said the morning after the referendum in Westminster on College Green, I said, this was the victory for the little people. And do you know what? Three and a half years on, nothing has been done for the little people. We're the party standing up for the little people. And I promise you, we will stick to those campaign pledges. Have I got time for one more question? Of course you have. Uh, talking about the little people, one of the promises in your contract with the British people is to abolish the most egregious tax, the inheritance tax. Mm. Will that affect even people in poorer areas like Hartlepool? I, to be honest, the, I think where inheritance tax hits people is, is in London and the South, where now a three-bed semi has reached such ludicrous price levels uh, that, that, you know, parents die, uh, the kids think they're going to inherit the house, but they can't yeah. because they have to sell it because there's a whopping great big tax to pay right. on a large chunk of it. Uh, so inheritance tax is less relevant in areas where houses aren't too expensive. But the point about it is... You know, you should be able, if you've worked and saved money, you should be able to leave some to your kids without being taxed again. That's the basic principle. And I think, I think, that, um, I think that all round with taxation, I mean, none of us mind paying fair taxes. No, absolutely not. Fair taxes in return for good public services. It's a mm. deal that we buy through council tax and through income tax and everything else. Uh, but, I, but, but I do think, you know, for small businesses, little limited companies, 
you know, making tiny profits every year. For them to be, for them to be taxed, for them to have to go to an accountant to go through the expense of a time, I think that's an absolute waste of money. And, and, and what is clear, what is clear, is if we do get a Labour government, we're all going to be taxed a lot more. Oh, yeah, I think that's probably right. Yeah. Uh, listen, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, do you think uh, Hartlepool will deliver a Brexit MP? I hope so. Uh, it's a town with a very strong sense of identity. Uh, it's a town that in local elections has been changing its habits over the course of the last few years in quite a remarkable way. Um, and I'll tell you what, if it, votes for a, if it votes for a Brexit Party MP, we'll put Hartlepool back on the map. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please like and follow Hartlepool TV on Facebook and YouTube.